England. So it, uh, the, the colonial regime in Jamaica was was almost like slavery. You know, it wasn't pretty. Um, there was no much schools, hospital, nothing of the sort. Anything in terms of schools and hospital that was in the colonies was primarily there to serve and benefit the expatriates and not the local people in of itself. So, um, <clears throat> you know, Marcus Garvey saw that. Marcus Garvey really wanted to spread his wing. Jamaica was pretty much a colony, a small place. He came to England to sort of help black people and mobilize. And also to point out to the British authorities to say, hey, you see the evil that they have been going on with. Um, but, you know, sadly when he came here, the system had a snare for it. He walked right in the snare. And he was pretty much just, you know, he was frustrated until he died. But um, all of that continued in the 1970s. Michael Manley trying to mobilize the people. We have on the other side the opposition, Edward Siaga. Well, you know, a lot of persons say that he was a good man for Jamaica. But a lot of persons think differently. Because, you know, he was one of the persons who contributed to the, the gun culture, which is even today pretty much part of Jamaican society. We cannot blame him for that. But at the same time, he really took big advantage. Power, you know, as Bob Marley would say in his music, fighting for power and they know not the hour, you know, um, they know not, not the hour that it is time for to wake up and, and, and come together and, and love and share and care and teach. Uh, that's the only way we're gonna, you know, reach um, beyond what we're in right now. So, there, there's a lot of things to say, you know, so Jamaica is just a microcosm in terms of what has been happening in Africa. In Far East Asia, it's like India, you know, the other part of the Caribbean, uh, and as we stand here in 2021, I was talking about these things. You know, it is offensive. You know, it is interpreted as offensive uh, by the British when we talk about these things. But how how would we fix the future if we don't talk about it? Because guess what? Happened? History of a way how it repeats itself. And many of those atrocities we do not want to be repeated. You know, we don't want a situation where black people are walking on the road in the UK and they just can't walk on certain roads and they will die. That is happening in the 1940s, 60s, 70s, when many um, persons from the colonies, colored people come from the colonies to help rebuild Britain. You know, after that public war in Germany. So there is so much things to say. And in terms of knowing where we are going for the future, we have to look at, at the past just to know where we stand now at the crossroad, at this place of intersectionality. Yes, we discuss these issues to, to see the best step we can make forward because I am very, very hopeful that the future can be way much better than it was in regard to the past if we are able to make the right steps and the right steps. Love.